Transformers Robots in Disguise is a show that I stumbled across one day on TF Wikinet and was like, hmm, that's pretty cool. The show is basically about some kid named Koji whose only lines are the word dad as his father is kidnapped by the Predacons and their leader Megatron, but is assisted by the Autobots who are waging war against them. The show follows the adventures of the Autobots as they attempt to put an end to the Predacons in the most kid-friendly way possible, uncovering some advertising along the way and not once making an effort to rescue Koji's dad. That's up to the real hero of the story, Skybite. I didn't grow up with this series, nor did I watch it in my youth. In fact, it was only about a year ago I watched the whole show when I found out it was all on YouTube. Hey! Support the official release! Yeah, okay, you're right. Let me go find the DVDs on eBay. What the fuck? I have to say, I didn't hate it. Robots in Disguise isn't what you would expect from a Transformers show, especially one following on from Beast Wars of all things. I mean, the Predacons are still there, but that's essentially where the similarities end. The whole show is a more comedic take on the Cybertronian War, and this series doesn't take itself very seriously. I guess all the complaints I had for the new Robots in Disguise can be applied to this show, that being that none of the characters develop, the fights are extremely underwhelming, and it can get rather boring at times as the plot progresses slower than my upload speed. But the difference here is that this show is actually enjoyable. Most of the characters are pretty likeable, most, and the humor is generally really good. The show has this gag of this woman named Kelly who always has something bad happen to her in every episode, and it's usually pretty hilarious. Sideburn and his obsession with red sports cars though, not so much. His entire character is just showing us things to come. Rid has reasonably dynamic and fluid animation for the transformation scenes, but that's essentially where the spectacle ends. A majority of the show is filled with dialogue with still images of the characters with indifferent mouth flaps. You know, in that typical anime fashion. Optimus's voice in the show sounds like someone doing a really bad impression of Optimus Prime. What do you know? Somebody must have forgotten to lock the gate at the petting zoo. He and Koji hold the title for the worst voice acting in the show. Megatron! You're just a big punk! A bully! You know what? You're a loser! Dude, you can't say that. This is a kid's show. And Megatron's voice is... Beef! Eh. It feels very for kids, but that's just a result of the early 2000s Americanized anime feel. For what it is, it's not terrible, but I have to say I enjoyed it much more the first time I watched it. Now I realize how incredibly slow the whole show is. It's very boring at times due to the constantly repeated shots and the slow plot progression. Reed doesn't have much in the way of plot. The stories are essentially just the kind of crap that we came up with as kids when playing with our Transformers toys, complete with nonsensical and bullshit Deus Ex Machinas. Such as the great and powerful Fortress Maximus being controlled by... children. Right. But while the series lacks in plot, it's the character interactions that are amusing. The show starts off a little rocky, but you ease into the show after a while. You come for the Transformers, and you stay for the Skybite. The Autobot cast is surprisingly large, though quite a few of them just come and go throughout the show, and they're usually so forgettable that they're not missed. I know I said in my Prime video that TF Prime was the only show where I preferred the cons over the Autobots, but this holds true for this show as well. Megatron sucks, as do the bootleg Combaticons, but Scourge is pretty good. And then, of course, the saving grace of the show, Skybite. Who's the baddest chuck around? Who's the smartest chuck in town? Skybite, that's me! He's so oh, cute! Good. He's so lovable and adorable that you can't help but root for him. I love how he's torn between helping the kids and his desire to impress Megatron. For me, Skybite made the show worth watching, and he's still to this day one of my favorite Transformers out there. Slapper, Dark Scream, and Gas Gunk made for the occasionally funny gag, and their bombastic and generally hilarious personalities made them stand out amongst the boring and bland Autobots. The only Autobots who weren't boring were incredibly annoying, such as Sideburn, Wedge, and Ultra Magnus. Rita also happens to have one of the most boring human characters ever, the aforementioned Koji, who does nothing in the show but whine and be sad about his dad. Koji, listen closely, you got to. Dad? <laughs> My dad's in danger. Somebody's gotta help him. And somebody will. Wait, what? He and Ty, the Autobots' holographic assistant, could have had a cool dynamic together, but this is an early 2000s anime dub, so... Sadly, the toy advertisements are very blatant in Robots in Disguise, more so than any other Transformers show I've watched including Armada, Cybertron, The Shit Rid, and Transformers Abortions in Disguise. You get a lot of the characters transforming and powering up constantly, especially Megatron, who has to find a use for all six of his useless alt modes. This is also true for Ultra Magnus, who, after his introduction, becomes nothing more than a power-up for Optimus instead of an actual character. This is a good thing though, however, because in the brief moments this Ultra Magnus does have separately, he doesn't SHUT THE HELL UP! Rita also has the characters shout their attack names needlessly before they do anything, which becomes ridiculously annoying after a while. Ultra Jet! Blaze Blaster! Dragon Mode! I seriously have no idea why shows do this. Very imaginative attack names, by the way. Bright Blazer! Center Laser! Left Blazer! 
This read has even less death and injury than the new show, but the fights are pretty lame anyway. Thankfully, the show tends not to focus on them for too long. As I said, it's more the characters that keep the show going. There's some surprisingly witty and funny dialogue within the show, hidden beneath the cliched banter and forced exposition. Several episodes made me laugh out loud, simply because I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, I'm Optimus Prime, I told you that! Whoa, check him out, he really went all out. We got four Optimus Primes here! It's kind of embarrassing, you know? It feels as if the dubbing team had a fun time working on the show. Still, a lot of the dialogue feels really forced. I imagine it was better in the Japanese version, Car Robots, which, by the way, has the most creative name for anything ever. It's not the kind of show you go crazy over and attempt to scavenge every DVD and VCR tape available just to get your sweet, sweet Koji in Thai action. It's more of a show you are content with watching if you were ever to happen upon it on TV. I'd say give it a watch if you haven't. It's only 39 episodes long. Just be sure to give it a bit of time. It might grow on you. All in all, I'd give Robots in Disguise a solid 3 Skybite haikus out of 5.